Hey everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So this is the final chapter, chapter 4 of Napau's Evolution and Side Quest. So again, like, like my previous uh, three chapter videos, I'm just going to uh, summarize a few tips as well as my thoughts on the video, then let you watch the rest of the video as usual. So. One thing you need to know is that you'll need 100,000 Dark Residue uh, to unlock the final door in order to fight the Dark Witch. So if you haven't already, um, make sure you run enough red and green keys in the another dungeon, hard or very hard, of the Dogma Tower in order to get that. I did find this chapter has um, a lot of feels. It is a very touching chapter and explores um, the relationship between um, the Dark Witch, Reptiris, and her husband who passed away unfortunately, uh, why she became that way, and you know, her relationship with her son. She also has a different relationship too, uh, which will get revealed towards the end of the chapter. Aldo even gets shipped with one of our characters. so. Um, you can see that in this chapter as well. He didn't want to seem to settle down though. I do actually appreciate the um, humor and lightheartedness um, because it's a good mix of that as well as, like I said, a touching, um, very rich storyline. And again, by changing the past, we did alter the future. So Medusa is no longer in this timeline, but yet the tower still exists. And of course, they will explain that throughout this chapter. I will say, I should have noticed uh, from the very first time that I visited this tower, there was a large kind of green cloud with some purple on the ground floor. And that actually is a very large tree. You'll also find out that um, the Dark Witch Reptiris is also a victim in this. Um, I wouldn't say she would have chosen this path of her own will, but unfortunately, uh, fate dealt her a cruel hand and I guess she made a bad choice and th things happen. There also is a tie-in to the Ogre War storyline, as well as, as to Ogre Rancorum, so that was a little surprising as well. This chapter actually has a lot of surprises and uh, plot reveals, so keep, atten uh, keep paying attention to it even as you're watching my video or as you're playing through it yourself. I also will say I did not realize who was speaking in the white cloud bubbles at the end of each chapter or you know sometimes during the chapter. I actually thought it was Napau but it wasn't. We do find out Napau's true name so that will be nice as well. In terms of strategy at a certain point in this chapter, near the end, um, you will progress beyond um, the 50th floor in the tower. And you'll need to rotate, rotate certain dials, which will unlock appropriate doors that were previously inaccessible in the tower. So the doors uh, start from uh, the 40th floor up to the 100th floor. And you can catch one of my videos on how to unlock the final 100th floor, which is an optional door that holds a couple of um, uh, treasure chests that you can get if you'd like. So the main way to do it is to match the symbol orientation. So on each floor, there's anywhere from two to five dials and you will rotate it um, to match the pattern on the door that you'll need to unlock. So my tip is to take a screenshot of the door and as you're walking through the different areas where there are dials, rotate the dial to the orientation that matches the missing um, part on your picture. That way you won't have to backtrack and kind of look at the door and that will get annoying really fast. Also, the very first time you trigger it, um, as soon as you turn the single dial, it will unlock the door right away and it'll kind of give you a signal. On future floors, it will only give you a signal when all the dials are in the right position. So um, if you rotate one to the correct position, it won't give it away. So just keep that in mind as well. 
unfortunately, uh, my iPod actually cut off the final boss battle, which is ridiculous. So I do apologize for not being able to share that with you. However, I will share uh, the tips that I did um, find with the battle. It's a fairly straightforward battle, although there are some annoying traits to it. And there is a chance of dying if you don't have the right mix of characters. So uh, you will need one healer, uh, preferably with status removal. Of course, if you have Mariel, that will be you know, always the case that you'll use her. Um, definitely bring a lot of strong attackers. If you want to use magical, you can. Mages, or if you want to use strong physical attackers, you can as well. Um, she has two forms, the Dark Witch. So it's kind of like when you're fighting the Beast King. You'll have one form where you fight, which is much easier. And that person has, you know, a number of pretty straightforward attacks. It's a five turn rotation, um, mostly single target magic attacks. Not too strong, hits for a few hundred damage only. And then on turn five, it'll do uh, a non type elemental AoE. So definitely survivable. No more than 1,000, 1,500 damage, especially if you have a lot of five star characters. And just like other bosses in this kind of um, uh, side quest, I wouldn't recommend equipping the ones that you are using to farm Dark Residue. Use your best team. You can always farm those Dark Residues in the Nether Dungeons afterwards. Now, the first form has about a million da uh, I would say less than a million HP and you can easily kill it. I would say like, you know, maybe 800, 900. My AF was for 900k and killed it off. Now the second one has a different rotation set. The first form does uh, similar to the first battle. At 30% lost HP, which is 70% left, it actually has an HP stopper. So you will not be able to AF it one shot until it's below 70%. So if you have a strong enough team, wait until you drop it right below 70% and then do one large AF. Otherwise, just whittle away at it and uh, see what you can do. Because at 70% HP, it turns into a different move set, which is a little bit more challenging. So instead of having those just those single target uh, attacks with magic and then seal, it actually has slightly more powerful attacks and it includes um, that a gravity attack, which drains a lot of HP, 80% of your um, um, current life. And if it follows up with a couple of single attacks and you're not well prepared, your team can die quite easily. So be prepared for that. Also, it does have a MP damage attack, so it'll drain um, your MP from your characters outside. So that gets a little bit annoying too. So I did find the bo boss battle was a little bit longer than I would, what, what I liked because I had to rotate some characters to the back and recover some of the MP. Um, but overall, I wouldn't consider it overall too challenging. As always, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, um, please do so. I really appreciate it. And I also have a Patreon account for those who are interested in uh, supporting me that way. Anyways, like most of my other story videos, um, I will stop talking now and let you enjoy the rest of the video in peace. Thanks for watching! We'll see you next time.